<laughs> Chris Benoit with the Zebra Stripes versus Brad Armstrong. A low-key dream match between two of the finest technical wrestlers of any generation. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when we were going through it, uh, Chris had, had, had gone a little bit past the beginning of the match. And in a second or two, I see the, the German suplex. I know it's Brad. I can see his boots BA. But I, I know that the tights, that it, like, it, it was in my brain. I knew who wore those tights. But I, because you, know, you couldn't see who it was, I was, wait, who, who, who's doing that uh you know and i'm waiting 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 and then he gets up and you see the hair and they almost simultaneously jim ross or somebody says uh you know chris benoit over brad armstrong and i thought that's right chris wore those tights and uh you know you go back and watch that german suplex at the end it is flawlessly executed and you know to me that is again like what what you saw coming out of Stu's school what you saw coming out of the dojos in japan uh, the, 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 the promotions in, in, uh, Mexico there, when they would hit those particular moves, especially finished moves, there was no leeway to do it half-assed or sort of right. And, you know, to me, like you can see in Benoit's execution of that, uh, him understanding how important that you can screw anything else up in the match that has to be perfect. And I'm not saying he screwed anything else up in the match, but like that was like, oop. Boom! Exclamation point, and uh, and Brad taking it right, and you see Brad making a competitive match the whole way through. You know, I think Brad's one of those guys. Yeah, I think the fans that know me out there know how you know how much I looked up to and respected Brad. I were good friends, I lived together, traveled together, but he was really excellent in the ring. And when you go back and watch him, he's again like one of those unsung heroes that you scratch your head and think like. Uh, okay, why? In, in Brad's case, I think a big part of it was the character that you would see on TV was the character that he would portray uh, because of what he had grown up watching. He watched his dad, the you know, Bob Arm for the bullet. I'm going to go out there and give 100%. I'm going to burn, 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 burn off. Okay, I believe that sounds great. Uh, Brad would get on. But the funny thing was, you know, we've all seen now in hindsight. Uh, Brian James, you know how animated and the dancing and the the, the beatboxing and the rapping and stuff. Brad was <laughs> love you, Brian, but I think Brad was even more talented in the dressing room. Brad could tell jokes, be moonwalking, uh, beatbox, make up a rap right there on the spot. Bah, bah, bah. But then he go in front of that camera. I'm gonna get 100. percent I'm like, oh, let that guy in the dressing room out. My God, that's a that guy's a star. And he just could not do it. Like Brian was the one to figure it out. Like I can go out there and you know be a little over the top and and, and be so much more entertaining. Um, but that said, when you watch Brad in the ring, I, I, I would argue to you find something that doesn't look legit with him when you're watching. It's just you know like, oh, golf clap, you know. And it's it. like that ain't easy for me. I'm, I'm I'm a stickler on stuff like that. But boy, when I watch him back, and it doesn't matter if he's going over. You know, putting somebody over, he, he goes out there and delivers the goods every time. It's you'd be hard pressed to really point something out that Brad fucks up in the ring. Uh, and, you know, and, and you know, Chris is you know, this is he's young here. You know, he's coming in there and you know, getting a win over a, over a vet like that is a big big deal. But he didn't shirk from it either. Like he, you could see him taking it completely serious. Uh, and, and the way he's executing his moves, that 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 when I think of uh, Chris Benoit, that's what I see like that. You know, it wasn't just a grab by the wrist and throw the ropes and then like you run 96 feet and come back. Hey, he looked like you could throw a tow truck like that. You know, he both leagues bending down, grabbing by both hands around the wrist. They're shoving the guys he goes by. Uh, each of those little things that any one of those things by themselves, almost meaningless, put them together collectively and watch Chris Benoit do an Irish whip. Watch Chris Benoit do a flying head, but watch him do a German suplex and it's Bam, 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 bam. It's post to post. I want to, I'm so glad you mentioned Irish Whip. I just wrote down Irish Whip. And the reason I saw it is Rip Rogers wonderfully describes it as as seen on TV wrestling. So if you yeah. think you're do, you think you're mimicking something, you Irish Whip somebody, just grab them by an arm, tug them, and then they'll do all the rest of the work. What these two were doing when they did the Irish Whip, grab one hand hand on the back with the other, throw them, and then follow with them 
into the ropes. Yes. And then when they yeah. bounce back, they've got one step before they're hit. So you can actually, yep. that's something that you can buy. And I really enjoy people who can do an Irish whip properly. Yeah, yeah. We, and we all get lazy, right? I mean, it's why we're all, I, I think, our worst critic. We, any of us watch our matches back and say, oh, I, I see everything I'm doing wrong. We all, those of us that are being serious with ourselves, we we catch everything we're doing wrong because we don't want to do the wrong things. Uh, but when you watch guys like Brad and guys like Benoit, like I said, go back and watch that I mean, freeze frame it and watch it frame to frame. Uh, I still dare you to find something that doesn't look legit, that doesn't come off as believable. Uh, again, those two guys are like the poster childs uh, for the, the kayfabe of our business, the protecting of our business, making it look like what it's supposed to look like. And you, know, you see the thing like in the Lucha Libre, right? They'll tap you on the shoulder, you run 20 feet mm -hmm. that way, and then 20 feet back, and I clothesline you. Well, you look like a dumbass. Right, but like you're describing, and and right as you come off those ropes, boom! There's the cl clothes on taking mm. your head off. One looks legit, and one looks like sports entertainment to me. Yeah, that was a world of sport Irish whip because that's how they do it there. Obviously, the rings are smaller, but you whipped yep. them in. I mean, before basically you, let's say I'm the person giving the whip. Before my arm hand lets go of their arm, they're already in the ropes, and they've yes. got one step out before they get hit. So there's none of this right. sort of like, you know, just uh, obviously running by yourself. Uh, let me just go yep, through a couple yep. of things with the uh, match. The crowd did not care at all to start off with, uh, but they would do later on. Little things just like how deep Benoit throws a kick to the gut lets you mm -hmm. know that shit's on. Because it's just like... Oh, just, yeah. And it looks... It, it didn't look like he killed him, but it looked serious because he, he, his knees even brought back with the force of uh, yeah. uh, Brad coming towards him. Uh, mm -hmm. What else? Uh the first move the crowd actually reacts to is Benoit hanging Brad out to dry on the top rope with a suplex, sort of like that. Uh, 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 what do you, you call it? Not like a stun gun, but sort of like that with the belly. And then followed by a springboard clothesline onto the floor. The crowd just went mental. And I thought, God, what a, what a few years makes in the business because then Jericho would do that in every single match he was ever in. Yeah. But at the time, yeah. that was like a hugely different thing. And then uh, Benoit misses an incredibly tight diving headbutt. Uh, Brad briefly takes over before... Benoit counters it into a bridging full Nelson suplex for the yep. pin. Absolutely yep. flawlessly executed that last Yes, move. sir. Uh, pretty yes, much all sir. of them. Earns the golf clap. I mean, that's that for the for again the kids out there, watch that back and emulate that. If there's something you want to emulate, that's the kind of stuff to emulate because it's I I, I for whoever's in that building, nobody's walking away going, ah, fake wrestling shit. Um they're walking away going, oh, those guys. They're, in other words, they're turning themselves into being marks on performances mm. like that. Uh, just to end on, you were saying about Brad Armstrong could never get his personality behind the scenes in front of the camera and make money off that. When Vince Russo would go to WCW in 1999, he repackaged Brad Armstrong into, do you remember the character's name? No. Buzzkill. Um, Buzzkill, yes. And he was told to imitate your more popular brother Brian as closely as humanly possible. Do you remember do you remember the Buzzkill days? Uh I I I don't remember specifically. I I if I'm not mistaken, uh he sort of it, 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 you can see Brad in his wrestling stuff while he's playing that character looks like Brad Armstrong, but the stuff in between looked contrived uh because it it just wasn't he had grown up watching that style of wrestling where the baby faces were going to give a hundred percent and all that kind of thing. And for whatever reason, he couldn't break that. It, if you want to see Brad looking, at least in my estimation, looking like something that is a work, it was him trying to portray this character. Cause it was a, it was a quantum leap from him. Uh, that was pr pretty much the guy he would play in the dressing room. Uh, but convincingly back there, cause there's no cameras and he's just hanging out with the guys out in front it always reminded me of the uh uh i don't know if it'll make reference to you guys in england uh uh the old looney tunes cartoons yeah, of course, right yeah. and uh and they had the uh remember the guy the construction worker finds the box under the time like a time capsule oh there's a frog hello my baby hello my darling he comes out dancing and singing and walking the tightrope and then he gets in front of the camera and the frog goes ribbit Right, that was Brad. Brad was like, "Hello, my baby guy in the dressing room," and I'm in front of a camera. Ribbit. 